Someone once told me there are more lessons in losses than there are in wins, and I couldn't agree more. Today I'm talking about all the mistakes I've made as an entrepreneur since 2015, which is when I founded my own company. Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Dental Marketing Made Easy. I'm Natalia Porras, the founder of NP Marketing, and today I'm talking about something completely different. I am talking about all the mistakes that I've made as an entrepreneur since the beginning of NP Marketing, which was about six years ago. I'm going to be talking about the four top mistakes I've made that I wish someone would have told me, or maybe I should have done a bit more research on those topics before actually diving deep into them. So let's take a look at my path as an entrepreneur. Before I start sharing all of the mistakes I've made as an entrepreneur, I want to clarify something. I'm sharing these mistakes because I think that these are all lessons learned. These are all learning opportunities for every single entrepreneur. And that's how I've taken each one of these mistakes. I have learned from them so that I could improve things as I go forward and make sure that we don't fall again into these mistakes. So with that, being said, let's get started with mistake number one. Mistake number one was not knowing when to say no to clients. So at the beginning, as an entrepreneur, I needed cash in order to grow. And of course, I would take on a lot of different clients, some which were not the right fit for me. Fast forward now, I know which clients I need to say no to. And it's something that only comes with experience and I think with years. But I wish that someone would have told me this. Analyze your situation and try and say no to clients that are not the right fit for you. The reason why, it's maybe because you don't have the right bandwidth. You're not the right fit, once again, or because you will not be able to successfully deliver the services or products that you have promised to this client Maybe you just simply don't like the client, so don't take them on. Second mistake I've made, or second biggest mistake I think I've made, is hiring the wrong person and then not having the processes in place to be able to have that person let go in a timely manner. So what happened there is I hired someone that I knew within a different sort of setting, that person was not the right person for the job at hand and I did not have a probationary period. This was at the very beginning. Um, we continued on with this person on board and they were just not the right fit and it actually cost me a client. That's how I learned that you need to have a lot of HR processes in place to one, make sure that you are hiring the right person and two, make sure that you have a process in place to evaluate that employee or that contractor, whatever it might be, to be able to let them go if need be properly, of course, but let them go before it affects you as an entrepreneur or as a business. Mistake number three is not delegating tasks to your team or not de delegating enough tasks to your team. Now, as an entrepreneur, I'm very sure, and let me know in the comments below, I am a control freak. I've been a control freak with my business because it's my baby. Since it's my baby, I thought that I had to have my hand in every little thing of the business. And I think it is important to have, to know or have an overall sense on what's going on with your business. But you also need to identify which areas in your business can be delegated to someone else who can actually do it better than you. And I know right now you're thinking no one else could do it better than me, but believe me, you need to identify those things that you can let go. The one thing for me that I could tell you right away, that was accounting and bookkeeping. I was a control freak over my accounting and my bookkeeping because I wanted to know absolutely everything that was occurring, cash in, cash out, and you still need to know that as an entrepreneur, but let me tell you this, the moment I decided I was going to delegate my bookkeeping to a bookkeeper who is much better at this than I am, I took such a huge weight off my shoulders. And that allowed me to go into my genius zone. My genius zone, which is business development, which is marketing, which is growing the business, 
and not having to deal with the day-to-day -day of accounting and bookkeeping for my business. So I wanna challenge you to think about which area in your own business as a dentist can you delegate to someone? I would think that that would be marketing, most probably. You could probably be delegating marketing to someone else who's much better at that than you are, and then focus your time and energy into running the practice or into seeing your patients. So let me know in the comments below, what is one thing within your practice that you could delegate to someone else? Last but not least is my fourth biggest mistake, which was not specializing earlier on in my business. And let me know if this is something that applies to you as a dentist within your dental practice. Let me know in the comments below. Now, for me, what occurred was I had just finished my MBA. I was exposed to many different industries when I decided to open up my own business and I started off in consulting. So when I started off in management and marketing consulting, I started out with clients in many different industries. And it took me a bit of time to actually decide to focus and niche in on dental. And I wish that I would have done that earlier on because ever since I made that decision to become the dental marketing go-to person, things have been going so much better. We've been able to focus so much. We have been able to be trained on different things that are very specific. We also know when to say no to clients, going back to one of my mistakes before, because they're not part of the clientele that we service. So I wish that earlier on, I would have identified that. I knew that that was an industry that I wanted to get in. I knew that that was an industry that I had a lot of contacts in, but I wish I would have you know, position myself earlier on as the specialist in dental marketing. So those were the four mistakes or lessons that I've learned from. Let's call them that way rather, because I think that every single mistake that we've made as a business owner is there's, there's some sort of a learning experience from that. And let me know in the comments below what have been some of the best learning experiences you've had as a dental practice owner. Now, I wanted to recommend something which is a book that I refer to all the time. It's called The Hard Thing About Hard Things, Building a Business When There Are No Easy Answers by Ben Horowitz. I've gone back to it many times. I even have my little post-its in here so that I know where which pages are great. Before I let you go as well, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We like to share videos, tutorials, how-tos on how to grow your dental practice using online marketing strategies. Also, make sure to download our complete guide. It's a freebie. You will fi find it in the description of this video below. I will see you next time. Same time, same place. Bye for now.